Before we get into the video, I would like to mention that if you really, really want to learn how curly to coily hair works and how it moves and reacts in certain conditions, like if it's wet, I highly recommend that you watch a natural hair video so that you can see it in action because that is really helpful and some of the things that I have learned um, are from just observing hair and also having the hair on my hand. So that's just helpful and I don't think I mentioned that so I'm mentioning it now. Anyway, here's that and I hope um, you find it helpful. If I miss anything, um, please let me know in the comments. Speaking of comments, the comment of the week is from Be Diverse, and here's that comment. I liked it. It made me smile. Also, this video was suggested by DC Sanders 92 so thank you so much for your suggestion. Hi, my peeps. Today, I am going to be doing a tutorial on how to draw hair for black people. And black people, we have a bunch of different hair types, but I'm going to focus on coilier hair for this video because that is a hair type that's pretty much exclusive to black people. So that's the one I'm going to cover today. So anyway, um, this is actually part three of how to draw black people. In the first video I cover like the basics of everything and the second video I cover how to color skin, how to select skin tones. So if that's something you're interested in, I will i uh, put that in the cards. Hopefully I remember. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and get right into this one, peeps. So, we have a lot of hair types. I've already mentioned this. Um, so here are some examples. When drawing black hair, you want to mostly, well, well drawing anything really, um, you want to focus on the shapes of things. So, if you, if you look here, um, especially on this lady here, you see that I have drawn in some lines to indicate the shape of her hair, um, as well as this lady over here. And I find if you're doing, like I said, anything really, but with drawing hair, since that's what we're talking about, um, it helps to block in the main shape of the hair before you do anything, before you worry about drawing individual curls and coils and stuff. Um, so that's one thing. Um, also, if I can pull up this guy here, oops, I clicked that first, oops. Um, I'm going to mostly talk about um, longer hair and I'm going to do a, a couple of short hair examples, um, but black men have a certain set of styles that they typically wear. It's not true for every black man, of course, uh, but I'm mainly talking about short hair here in this example. Um, and with black men, when you're drawing their hair, uh, I find that a lot of men have this particular hairline. It's, it's a popular choice. Um, actually, my older brothers are both barbers, and they have Instagram, so if you need a bunch of references of black man hair, I'm going to put their information. Uh, their Instagrams in the description so you can check them out. But the, it's like this really geometric shape that I notice a lot of black men do their hair lines. They like line it up and stuff. So that's an interesting little nugget um, that you can utilize, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get into like a demo. And I have already like sketched the faces. The faces are not super accurate. But I'm not doing faces today, so it's fun. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so looking at this lady's hair, I see that it's pretty much this almost trapezoid shape. Is that a trapezoid? No, that is a pentagon. <laughs> anyway, so uh, here I've already put in her hairline. That's the first thing you do. Draw the head, the shape of the head, so you know where the head is, how it's going to fit in under all of that hair. And then identify where the hairline is, which I've already drawn it, and I also see that she has a part, so I am going to put the part here. And next, I am going to identify the basic shape of her hair, so it's like, I'm going to need another layer. <laughs> so it's like, um, I'm going to need another color to get the contrast nicely. So I see her hair goes like this, then this, and it follows the line of her neck here. And it goes up here, which is a part here. It goes down here, 
and this is pretty much here. It looks like it kind of goes behind her shoulder here, and then she has a bit that goes in front of her shoulder here. So, going back to my sketch here, I've already um, mapped out where the hair is, so I'm basically gonna copy that shape here. And you can actually uh, exaggerate this a bit if you like. I'm not really going to. I'm gonna try to get this as accurate as possible if I can. So there I have the basic shape of her hair. And the next thing that I'm going to do to draw the individual, well, I'm not gonna draw the individual. Disregard that. What I do when I draw curly and coily hair types is I identify the shape first, which I just did. Then I add a bit of texture around the outer edges. I am not going to sit and draw individual curls. You don't do that when you draw straight hair. So to me, it doesn't make sense to do that for curly hair types, especially since it's not following a specific path, if that makes any sense. Um, but I can see the flow of her hair here. So that is something you can draw in, but you're not going to sit and draw individual curls. That's unrealistic. I mean, you could. It's just going to take forever. Uh, so I'm going to cut this off. So I'm looking at her hair. I'm looking at her hair type, her hair pattern. It's mostly making like an S shape like this, which is little squigglies. So over the shape that I have drawn here, I also see that it's mostly flat but poofy here at the top. So I'm going to keep that mostly flat. And then, once I establish the flat areas, I am going to go in and basically add a bunch of little squigglies to represent her curls. And towards the end, or just some areas where I feel like I want to add some spice, <laughs> I'm going to kind of end it with like a little curly thing like that. So, I'm just going to do that, and I'll be back. So, that's pretty much the basics. Um, if I can do this. I'm going to get rid of these shapes here, so you can see it better. What do you know? Look at that. I've drawn curly hair. Actually, I should fix her hair line up a bit. <laughs> so let me do that first. Okay. So there we have curly hair. It's obviously curly. It's not straight. Now, if you wanted to add some more details, you can go in and add like a bunch of those little squigglies inside the shape. I do this sometimes. I don't really do this all the time. Um, but I mean, you can do it to add a little splash. Um, and when you're doing this, you want to make sure you follow the, like, like be aware of where the hair is going. So, like, I see she has this, and she has a piece that seems to be going forward. And then she has this piece like this, and then she has something going on like that. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is confusing. Um, but it's, when you're drawing the individual, well, not individual girls, but adding more definition to your drawing, some more details. Um, you do the same thing you do if you were drawing straight hair. You see where the hair is flowing and draw the little curlies going that way, in that direction. Okay, so this lady here has poofier hair. And we're basically going to do the same thing, but I see she doesn't have as many defined curls as the other lady. So, I'm going to do the first thing. Establish where, what the main shape is. Oops. So her hairline is like here. I've already drawn her hairline on my little sketch there. So here is like that. And it has almost like a middle part going on. So that's the basic shape of her hair. Uh, so going down to my sketch here, the first thing we're going to do is draw that shape. Oops, in the right color. <laughs> it's actually kind of poofier than that. 
Okay, so I have the basic shape for her hair. Her hair is poofier, so actually what I would typically do is I wouldn't do add all of those details like I did with the last one. And I would just draw the shape of the hair and maybe add texture and details with shading and stuff. So, and this is really poofy, so I'm not going to draw a bunch of little squigglies like that. I'm going to make bigger squigglies. And I see her hair is kind of going up here. You can't see that. <laughs> uh, okay, so I see her hair is kind of going here, and then like the sun is going here, the sun's going this way. So when I'm drawing this here, I'm going to make sure I keep that in mind. So there's like a middle part here on this, so that's going to kind of go up there. She has a swoopy thing here. And so that's, that's my shape here. That's the basics. I would just leave that like that normally, but if you do want to add some more um, details, I would draw a bunch of shapes like this. Swoopy, big, curly shapes. And keep in mind that where the hair is going in my reference. And that is all for that one. And that's it right there, Chief. Draw the earrings back in. Oh, it would help to get rid of the shape of her head as well. And look at that, it's a poofy afro. Okay, so this lady here has really coily hair. Actually, here's an interesting fact about really coily hair. Um, some people would look at this, look at her hair and think, um, she doesn't really have curls or coils, what is this? And the thing about really coily hair is it's really coily. So her hair strands are basically a bunch of really tiny little springs like this. And when you put them all together, you're not going to really see the coils. You're not going to see individual coils because they're so tiny. Um, so I'm basically going to do the same thing, but I'm not really going to add a lot of details. I would make her hair look fluffy with like shading and highlights, and I would not add any of those little little squigglies for um, because those to me would would um I need to stop trying to multitask. <laughs> but anyway, so the little like if I were to draw a little teeny squigglies. Um, to like for the first example I did those squigglies to show that her hair is she has like defined curls. I would not do this for her because I want her hair to look fluffy because to me her hair looks really fluffy. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing basically. I'm going to identify the shape of her hair. So her hair goes like this like that and then there goes her hairline. And then I would go to my sketch, copy that shape. You can exaggerate if you like. And I really like this reference. So I have her shape down. And I would use really small squigglies. Or you can actually just keep this shape here if you like, if you want something more um, cartoony, I guess. Opacity. And I'm going to do really tiny squigglies. And then I'm going to put in her hairline. I actually kind of already did that. Mm. I already did that. <laughs> Um, well, actually, I did say I wasn't going to add more definition, but I do see some, some of her hair is going like, let me get my green pen. Some of her hair is going like this. So, if you did want to add some definition and some more details, 
You can go and do, so like these really tiny squigglies that I've drawn around here here, you can add some of those on the inside if you wanted to. Like that. So I'm going to go to my sketch here, get rid of the shape of her head, and also that there. And there you go. I have drawn a really curly afro. So next we have this fella. I'm gonna get rid of that. His hair is really short, so it's pretty much gonna follow the shape of his skull here. So I don't really need to identify the shape of his hair because it's just following his skull. And I'm gonna basically do the same thing I did on the last one, but only on the top because I'm gonna give him a fade. He's gonna be fancy. And then this is just gonna follow the shape of his head here. Little squigglies. They show that his hair is really textured. And like I mentioned earlier about the... I guess it's called lining. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna do that even though this reference doesn't really have it. So I'm gonna draw this. It's really geometric shape. So that, I'm not gonna lie. This is something I struggle with. I do not know why, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Okie dokie. I think I did a okay job there. And another thing about, this isn't true for every black man I know, but if you want it to, you can draw waves. And I'm going to show you that one. So it would basically, how I, well how I drew it, draw it, <laughs> is follow the shape of the head, then I draw the really geometric shape for the hairline. I feel like the other one was better. <laughs> yeah, the other one was much better, but we're gonna ignore that. And the waves, it's basically you brush your hair down and your curls or your coils kind of lay down, but they still have the texture. I, I'm, my brothers could explain it a lot better than I could, but basically it would I'm sorry, this is his head from the back. <laughs> Those are his ears. This is his head from the back, and it would go like this to the front. <laughs> um, if he has 360 waves, but anyway. Um, oops, so if I were to draw that here, I can't deselect, I'm frozen. No, okay, so if I were to draw this here, I would just put some lines here, and then if I were drawing the back of his head, that would do the little spiraling wave thing. So that's something to keep in mind, but this one shows the texture, so I feel like that would be really helpful. I'm gonna clean up my sketch a little bit more. Look at your boy, he's so fancy. So, we're gonna move on to our final one, and this one I'm gonna show you how to color the hair and I have already done a I've already pretty much colored it we're not on the skin I already did that um, I didn't I can't remember if I actually colored but I did go over how to pick colors and stuff so I'll get that for sure and it's basically the same principle you identify the main shapes present then if you then you add texture by adding little squiggly lines. And then if you would like to add more details, you add more squiggly lines following the path that the hair is following. So for this lady, I feel like it's really, you can definitely see the shape. I don't necessarily have to draw over top of this, but I will anyway. Also, she has braids here, but I'm gonna draw locks um, because I feel like that is more useful for this tutorial. Maybe I'll debraid some other time. So she has these locks here. Well, they're braids, but they're locks today. <laughs> How about that? So she has those locks. And then she has these big poofy things here. This looks like one big poof here. And then she has her hair here. She has parts. And then there's like one there. This kind of goes there. And these are like circles. Go all the way down here and there 
She has little bands here. This one has jewelry. This one has jewelry too. And then her hairline is like this. So I've identified the shapes. And so I'm going to put in her hairline first. That goes like this. Then she has this part down the middle. Actually, I'm going to bring that back because I do remember correcting that. The shape of her head. And, but anyway, so I have that. And there's almost like a little indention here at the top of her head. So I'm going to add that because her hair is poofy. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so I have done that, and she has what appears to be a big poof here. But I do see on this side she has two poofs, so I'm going to separate it into two poofs. So I'm going to have this poof in the front. Actually, another thing, I, I didn't do this on the reference, but I'll do it here. Is something that would be helpful, especially if you're drawing like locks or braids or something. Um, is to treat this whole area as a shape that goes down like this so that it won't so that will flow properly basically so that it won't look like crooked or anything or stiff I feel like it's the best way to describe that so I should have did that first so get rid of these loose do that first I make sure her poofs don't look crooked. So I'll do that. Kind of lays over her shoulder. And I can go over the opacity of that. So that when I go to add her other poofs, they can flow properly. And I see she has three, and then the reference cuts off here, but I'm going to put a fourth one. I'm going to line them up. Two. I'm going to add a fourth little baby poof. So I have all my shapes here. And I'm going to start adding my line art. And for my line art, I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at her hair texture. Her hair texture looks really coarse, really coily. So I'm going to do small little squigglies. Except on her head, because if you look on the top of her head here. Cut this off. Uh, it's pretty flat, so I'm going to keep that flat on my picture here. And the braid connects here, but today it's a lock, and it follows the shape of her head. Then it goes down like this. going to lower this opacity. Okay. I'm going to try to keep it the same width throughout. And how I draw locks is I establish the shape and then I draw these. It's a back and forth line like this, basically. So I'm basically going to do that throughout the length of the, the lock. It's a lock today. Okay? I don't like calling them dreadlocks. I feel like that's rude. And I'm basically going to do that for the rest of them. Okay, so I have drawn in her locks. And now I'm going to add some... Well, I'm going to do the line art for her boots. So I see her hair type. It's like a... Almost, it's like a... It's like a little wave. So that's what I'm going to do. If you wanted to make this look really poofy, you could opt out of the line art, and I'll show you what you could do with that later. But anyway, so I see she has some, like there's a separation there, and I also kind of see a separation here. So, and these are pretty, I feel like those are pretty straight down. Well, they're, they're still poofy, but the hair is going in the same direction.
So here at the bottom, you see I've done this like little squished in donut hole thing, and that's because I'm thinking about how, like if I were doing this hairstyle on my own head, how I would style it, and if I wanted the end of the hair to end in like a little ball, I would like tuck it in on itself, like a donut. So that's why I've drawn it like that way. And speaking of which, it really does help to think about, um, like how the hair would move, how it would flow and fit into certain hairstyles so that when you are trying to add more details that you can um, make sure that every strand or every little curly thing is going in the right direction. And with that, I have actually completed drawing her poofies and I would actually draw some little lines here to make so that you know that her hair is like going like the smooth parts of her are going backwards so I have drawn her hair okay so to color this first of all I am going to like if you were doing this on paper of course you wouldn't select everything I will fill this in with a base color first so I filled in all the color base colors for her hair and I I'm doing this digitally so I am gonna start with the medium tones first and then do the high the highlights and then the shadows well actually shadows and highlights um, but for something like watercolors or gouache well for gouache I would do it pretty much the same way but for watercolors I would start lightest to dark but anyway so I'm gonna use a soft brush because her hair is goofy so I'm gonna go along the edges of her hair with a soft brush to soften up the edges and so that it does look goofy and like I mentioned earlier with the lady with the really coily hair the way that I would do that if I didn't want to use liner is I would just go in with this really soft brush to block in the shape of her hair because as you can see this brush is pretty soft and it makes the hair look really goofy and fluffy and I'm gonna put my brush specs up on the screen I'm using SAI um, so hopefully that will be helpful for you if you too are using SAI um, this brush is based off the dense watercolor brush from clip studio so if that's helpful um, there's the thing but it's basically a really soft brush and it's nice for blending in for making curly hair look floofy. So I'm basically gonna do that throughout all of her hair. It doesn't have to be super precise. I am doing too much. So let me make my brush bigger in. So this will be faster. And you can do this for the twists as well if you like. So after I've done that, I'm gonna go up to her, oops, her hairline. As you can see, it's not uh, like a straight across, it's kind of fuzzy looking. So, and what I like to do anyway, no matter what hair type I'm drawing, I do like to make the hairline look pretty soft, unless I'm doing um, like the hairline for men where it's really geometric looking. And I just trace in her hairline with the soft brush so it looks soft yeah and after i've done that now i'm gonna move on to shading and i do want her hair to look pretty soft and fluffy because that's how it looks in the reference so i am going so i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna do like super defined lines or anything. I'm basically just going to be blocking in colors and making them look soft. So I can invert this side. Just the hair selected. And I'm going to do the shadows first. I'm just going to pick it directly off of the reference here. Um, but you go with a shadow color and Actually, I'm not going to pick it directly after the reference. I'm going to do what I normally do, and I'm going to select a purple and set it to multiply and see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, <laughs> so I'm 
basically going to do really loose um, shapes, motion things. I'm, I'm making a, a shape like this in the hair. And it's really soft looking. So I'm just going to do that throughout all of her poofs. And keep in mind where shadows are and stuff. I'm going to add some of this shady color where the hair is separated so that you can see that it is separated. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to select my highlight color and I'm going to use this orange. Um, yeah, and I'm using SAS, I'm going to set my layer to luminosity. But if you were doing this with watercolors, like I said, you would work from lightest to dark. So I would use like a really light brown and then add little squigglies with the darkest color and make sure to keep my highlighted areas blank. And I would also soften some edges with just a wet brush so that things don't look too um, unfluffy because we're going for maximum fluff here. And if I were using gouache, I would just make sure, I would actually, what I did a couple weeks ago is I used a parsley dry brush to color the edges of her hair and it made it look really nice. So I'm basically, and I'm doing this like this right now, but I'm actually, actually I'm going to set my watercolor brush for this because it's softer. And I am going to lighten this up a little bit. I'm going to lower the opacity so that it looks softer. Basically, how I would shade locks is I would just do a straight line down. <laughs> um, at shading or highlights, that's how I would do that. So I don't do anything too fancy. And I've selected my soft brush again, and I have I don't know what this is called. It like make it turns whatever brush you're using into an eraser. It's like a little square underneath your selected colors, and I'm just unselecting color. Erasing color, I guess is what you call that. <laughs> so I'm just doing that throughout the highlighted areas to soften things up and add a little detail, a little texture, you know. And it's basically that squiggly motion, so. Nothing too fancy. Okay, and like I said, I selected luminosity. I'm just going to lower that a little bit. And for my shadow color, I don't want it to be as purple, so I'm going to tweak that a little bit and make it a little more blue. Of course, you can't do this on uh, traditional art, but I can do it on digital art, so I'm real. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. That's basically how I would color her hair. And you could use some of those same techniques on other curl types, um, but if her hair is more defined, I would go in with shapes like this. Um, Basically the same little squiggly that I use to, oops, wrong color. Basically the same shapes that I use um, to draw the out, draw the liner. I would use that to draw shinier, more defined curls like that. Her hair is floofy, so I'm not going to add that. But anyway, that's basically how you draw curly hair. The main thing is to identify the shapes. Um, then you can add little squiggly lines to show that it's textured. Um, a tighter squiggly line would show that their hair is more coily and a looser squiggly would show that it's more curly. Curly is on the looser side, coily is on the tighter side. And do the same thing if you want to um, add details so you use a little squiggly line. 
And for shadows and highlights, I would use a soft brush if I'm using digital a digital program. Or if I'm doing it with like markers. Well, I didn't even go over markers. If I'm doing it with markers, I would um actually I go for the cell shaded look if I um color curly hair with markers. Um, and if I'm using watercolors, I would lay down a lighter color first, then a darker color all over top, and soften up some areas with a wet brush. If I'm doing wash, I would do the same thing that I do on the computer. Um, except I would use a dry brush for the edges. But anyway, those are the basics of how to draw curly hair. I hope it was helpful. Um, it's, sometimes it's hard to explain what how, sometimes it's just hard to explain how I draw because I, I, a lot of the time I just do it without thinking so sometimes it's hard to put into words what I'm doing but I hope it was helpful and I hope you liked this video and um, yeah if it was helpful or if you feel like I missed something like if you do draw a lot of curly hair and you feel like I missed something um, please let me know in the comments and yeah anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and please enjoy the rest of your day my peace